Finally, let's talk about price discrimination. You only have this option if you're a monopoly. Now, there's first degree price discrimination, aka perfect price discrimination, and here's what that is. It's when you're charging every individual a different price, namely the most that they're willing to pay. There's not really any real world examples of this, so here's a fictional one. Imagine you're a mind reading pizza store owner that's selling pizza by the slice. So let's say the first customer walks in, you do some mind reading and you're like, hmm, okay, it's $9 a slice. The customer is saying, oh wow, $9. If you would have said 901, I would have walked out, but you know, sure, I guess. So they pay you the $9. Now the second guy comes in, you mind read and you say, it's seven dollars a slice, and they're like, "Wow, you would have said seven oh one. I would have walked out." And so they pay seven. So basically, every customer is paying the most that they're willing to. So that's the value on the demand curve, the Y value, the willingness to pay is what they're paying you. So instead of charging the same low price for everything, you're actually charging a different price. And so now you actually get all this as a part of your producer surplus. And the thing is, you don't need to stop now where MR equals MC. You can go all the way over here where supply and demand usually intersect for perfect competition because you know you don't sort of lose profits on earlier products as we talked about earlier. Uh, so it's kind of like your marginal revenue isn't really you know, affected by that. So you might as well just get whatever you can, sell as many slices as you can, and that's why you're actually gonna produce the same quantity, which ironically makes this efficient because there's no deadweight loss. It's the same amount of total consumer and producer surplus as it is under perfect competition. But all of this is producer surplus. There's actually zero consumer surplus. Now the other type of discrimination that you learn about is third degree price discrimination, AKA multi-market discrimination. Now this is where it's not quite as fine grained as first degree where you're discriminating by the individual. Here you're discriminating by the group, the type of group of uh, people. So let's say you own a movie theater and you're charging, let's say, $7 a ticket, you know, as a monopolist. But then, let's say you realize that, hmm, you know what? I can kind of identify whether someone's a student or not based on whether they have a student ID. And let's say you're kind of thinking, hmm, you know, students seem to be quite elastic. They have a lot of alternatives, and I feel like I'm losing a lot of students by charging $7 a ticket. And if I charge something lower, I'd get so many more students through the door. On the other hand, part of you is also thinking, but you know, all these non-students, all these adults that are just sort of coming in, it's like, I could charge them more than seven and they'd still come, you know? So part of you wants to lower the price for the students and raise the price for, the, uh, for everyone else, but you know, you can't if you're not allowed to discriminate. So let's say you actually are allowed to do third degree price discrimination, meaning by the group. Well, here's how you do it. You basically split the market into the two different types of consumers, the two different groups. And once you've done, split that, which usually they won't ask you to split that, they'll give you the two different graphs on any problem, all you have to do from there is MR equals MC and find the price like you normally would. So you kind of solve for the equilibrium separately for the two different groups. One doesn't even affect the other and that's how you find the equilibrium optimal price for each market. So for students, let's say you do the MR, find the MR, see where MR equals MC and go up to the demand for the price and let's say you found that was five. This means that you're making a lot more producer surplus by charging students $5 a ticket instead of seven. So by charging them five, you're gonna maximize profit. And let's say for non-students, you do the same thing. You find your MR, see where MR equals MC, go up to the demand curve, and let's say that was 10. This means that you're now gonna be able to charge them $10 a ticket, and you're making a lot more than if you were to only charge them seven, because that's how you maximize profit there, and that's how you maximize profit there. There's still some deadweight loss, unlike first degree, but you know, that's how you can do third degree price discrimination.